police are looking for a suspect tonight after a fatal shooting in northwest Portland. Welcome to KGW News at 5. I'm Christelle Kumwe. Authorities got to the scene around 11.15 Friday night. The shooting happened in Wallace Park. Portland police say they found the victim at the park. She was being treated by paramedics, but died before she could be taken to the hospital. So far, no arrests have been made. Authorities have not said yet who the victim is. Now let's turn to the fight against addiction. For the last couple of years, Oregon has ranked high when it comes to the number of people struggling with addiction. At the same time, the state is right near the bottom when it comes to the meeting of the treatments and the needs of those who need to fight this disease. Now, Alma Makari spoke with some people in recovery as they walk through downtown Portland today. Oh, that is that's right, Christelle. A couple of hundred people, I should say, participated in this morning's walk for recovery. Organizers say through this event, they are working to build community and celebrate healing while also advocating for more to be done. So more people in active addiction can get real help as soon as they're ready. Saturday morning at Pioneer Courthouse Square, people in active recovery. Being able to connect with people that are just like me, and understanding that I'm not alone. And those who love someone struggling with addiction. The journey to get there is hard and it shouldn't be hard. Gathered together to celebrate what recovery means to them while addressing the current obstacles of getting to that place. This is a crisis. There is a solution, and when we, we uh, implement that solution, all of Oregon is going to be lifted up. A new OHSU analysis highlights the problems and gaps in Oregon's addiction recovery system, pointing out the lack of prevention specialists, of addiction counselors, of facilities and community centers. Mike Marshall, executive director of Oregon Recovers, said the statistics are staggering. The numbers are glaring, but they are, um, they're now a roadmap, and so that's really exciting. Marshall explains Portland's Walk for Recovery is one of five across the state. Participants proudly promoting their recovery journey. That's hugely important, and their family gets to walk alongside them and be proud of them. And that, sorry, I get emotional every time I talk about it. That is so amazing. You, that dynamic is, is so extraordinary. Brandon Lyle entered into recovery in 2017 and hopes his own lived experience can guide others and show people they're not alone. So when I got introduced, I just thought it was just a thing that you did because you had to go to court. <laughs> and what you had to do because your probation officer told you to do. But like when I actually committed to it, it was such a beautiful thing. It was like finding God. Pam Connolly is a founding member of Oregon Moms for Addiction Recovery. These people give me hope. These people give me hope that my, my child can be out here someday too. Her son suffers from substance abuse disorder and has been in recovery for five months. But getting help and treatment wasn't easy. Somebody who's sober it can call every single day for a month and get nowhere. How is somebody in active addiction supposed to get help? Through walks like this one, they're building community while working to fight Oregon's addiction crisis. Walking today so someone else has access to recovery down the line, whether it's their kid, their neighbor, or someone they'll never know, like to be empowered that way is just, um, it is so moving and motivating. In downtown Portland, Alma McCarty, KGW News. Let's talk about fentanyl, the synthetic opioid, which is the number one killer of people 18 to 45 across the country. Both Oregon and Washington are getting a chunk of new federal grant money to tackle the epidemic. Oregon will get more than $20 million, 15 million of that going to the Oregon Health Authority. Washington will receive more than $27 million. The money will go towards expanding access to drug treatment and recovery support. It will also make the life-saving drug Narcan more accessible. Deaths from fentanyl in Oregon climbed 600% between 2019 and 2021. Now let's take a look at the drug problem on a national scale. More than 100,000 Americans died of drug overdoses in 2021, and most are linked to synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Now claims that a colorful version of the drug that can easily be confused for candy is circulating in the U.S. Ariane Detail and our National Verified team explain what you need to know about the potent drug. 50 times stronger than heroin and up to 100 times stronger than morphine. 
Fentanyl, a synthetic opioid, was linked to 66% of American overdose deaths last year. Recently, social media posts have claimed there is an influx of rainbow-colored fentanyl in the U.S. Some posts say drug dealers are using the candy-colored drug to entice teens and young people. So let's verify. Is rainbow fentanyl circulating in the United States? Our sources are the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, the Placer County District Attorney's Office in California, and law enforcement agencies in Idaho, Oregon, and Georgia. An August 30th warning from the DEA confirms that rainbow-colored fentanyl is available across the country and has been seized in 21 states. State government and law enforcement agencies throughout the country have also confirmed reports of rainbow fentanyl circulating in their area in August. Many of these sales are happening on apps like Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, according to the district attorney's office in Placer County, California, which saw a 450% increase in fentanyl deaths between 2018 and 2021. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office in Oregon says deputies found four grams of multicolored powdered fentanyl that looked just like sidewalk chalk while executing a search warrant and shared concerns about rainbow fentanyl getting in the hands of young adults or children who could mistake the drug for a toy or candy. So we can verify, yes, rainbow fentanyl is circulating in the United States. The DEA says all colors, shapes, and sizes of fentanyl should be considered extremely dangerous. Anyone who finds a colored pill or powdered substance should call 911 immediately. With your Verify, I'm Ariante Till. All right, we have an update for you tonight. The man accused of arson at Vancouver Mayor Ann McInerney Ogle's house has been charged with breaking into her home one day earlier. Court records show Aiden Michael Murray has been charged with residential burglary. That's on top of the arson and malicious mischief charge he's already facing. Murray is scheduled to be arraigned next Thursday. Oregon State Representative James Heap will reportedly not face criminal charges. He spent a night in jail after police responded to a disturbance at the Clackamas County Fair last month. Much of it was recorded on their body cameras. The Oregonian reports the news from the Clackamas County DA. Heap said it all started when a woman asked him to put out his cigarette and leave. After police arrived, he was arrested on suspicion of disorderly conduct and interfering with a peace officer. We have new video tonight from the Columbia River. Another ship called the Alert was lifted out of the water this morning. A different ship known as the Sacarissa was lifted earlier this week. Throughout this process, thousands of gallons of diesel fuel and oil waste have also been removed from the water. The two ships got to Portland in 2006. After sitting off Hayden Island for more than a decade, both ships sank last year. The Oregon Department of State Land is also working with the Coast Guard. Officials say people were actually living on these ships. They were not sinking on their own, and the and the actual uh, we know actually from the the Sacarissa because it had been raised, and, we, and and when the Coast Guard raises it, then they patch holes so they can float it and tow it. And that one actually sank because someone who was salvaging on the vessel cut through a, a pipe. Ryan says he's not sure why the alert sank. Officials say it will take several more days to complete the investigation. Both ships sank before any coordinated effort was put together to tow them away.